Hi everyone, good evening and welcome. My name is Rudy Page and I'm really pleased that this evening we have Lorna G, highly talented and legendary. Lorna G, good evening and good day, how are you? Hello Rudy, how are you doing? Good, good, good. Good? Yeah, excellent, good to see you again. So we're gonna have a chat about the legends of them. So Lorna, before we get into that, just tell us a bit about yourself and family background. Okay. Hold on one second, because you know this is live, yeah? Yeah. So let me try something, right? <laughs> Why not? Creativity is really yeah. <laughs> that's what live is all about, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. I think I might have shared that. Let's see. <laughs> Let's see how that works out. <laughs> okay. Greetings, brother. Nice to see you. Nice to see you too. Tell me, tell me, tell me your question again. So tell us a bit about yourself and your family background before we get into the legends of them. A bit about myself. Okay. Well, born and bred in Brixton. Okay. I was born off Acre Lane in a house. Um, my parents are from Jamaica. My mother is from Port Antonio, from Portland. My father was from St. Anne's Runaway Bay. Yeah. Okay. And, um, you know, as I said, I grew up in Brixton. Yeah. Okay. So you really are a Londoner. I'm a Londoner. I'm a Brixtonian. So tell us about the show, The Legends of Them. The Legends of Them, yeah, is a... Um, it's a journey. It's all about the journey, you know. It's a, a one-woman play that I um, that I wrote, and um, I'm going to be performing in it. Uh, I say it's a one-woman play, but you know, it's it has many voices, and it has a whole team around it to make it happen. We have our lighting, we have our sound, we have our projection, and you know everything to help the story. Um, and yeah, it's pretty much about my life story from my eyes, from my point of view. It's also about the legends in my life, the blueprint of my life, which is my mother, Euphemia, my sister, Cherry Gross, my brother, Muji, Nanny of the Maroons. I grew up hearing about Nanny of the Maroons and, you know, where my mom comes from, where my mom was born is where, um, you know, uh, Nanny Town was. So my mom was born in Moortown. So I grew up hearing a lot of the nanny stories and how we are direct descendants from nanny. And, you know, I mean, we have the warrior power. So, oh. um, yeah, so these legends appear as, as guidance through this story. Um, and it's also, you know, it's also, it's also to do with the music, being in the music industry in Jamaica, in America um, and in London, because I resided in all these places. Um, and had many lives, <laughs> many different lives, doing many different things. And yeah, you know, something came to me to just to 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 write it, to write it. And when I started writing this story, I had no idea what this was going to be. I didn't know. Yeah, I didn't know what it was going to be. I just knew that there were certain experiences and and stories that I wanted to 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 shed. Um. And when I say shed, it started as shedding because I started a spiritual journey in, in India. And that's when everything started to unfold for me and still unfolding to this day. So it's just an amalgamation of all, this, all the memories. Right. So the story decided to come out. And uh, so how has it been writing a stage show for the first time then? Um, as I said, it's been it's been really challenging because I when we when I when I first started this journey of writing, I wasn't actually going to write the story. I was looking for a writer to write it for me, so I would tell them the story and they would write it because I didn't see myself as a writer. And it was um, working with um, Hackney Showroom; they're the ones that you know um, Nina and Joe were saying, you know, what we we like 
to hear your voice oh. from from the first person and when we hear it from you it's it just sounds so authentic, authentic. and we'd love you know for you to write it we yeah. think you should write it and your story and you should tell it exactly i mean you know the details they say you know they say when telling the story of your life make sure that you hold the pen and it is so true because no one has your voice no one can quite say it like how you say it you know what I mean and whether it's wrong or right or special or pretty or ugly or whatever however it is it shows up it shows up from your point of view absolutely and it's what we call the lived experience absolutely so yeah so what have been the main differences between telling your personal stories through music than through theatre? And, and of course, you're of the Lovers Rock generation, of course, that great sound created by the Windrush descendants. So, yeah. I can barely hear you, you know. I can barely hear you. Let me repeat that again. So okay. what have been the main differences between telling your personal stories through music than through theatre? I don't think it's quite been like this before. I'm telling stories that people, even some of my family probably haven't even heard. Mm. Um, the difference is, is I'm acting it out. Uh, the similarities are that when I used to write uh, lyrics back in the day, even from the sound system days and if you listen to any of the records that I've written, it's always been about personal experiences. I've always been that kind of um, inclined to just write what I'm experiencing. I kind of just haven't had any time for anything else. It's like, I like to write about what I know, you know? And so uh, to me, it's just another form of storytelling. Cause when I was writing my lyrics and I'd be, performing it to the audience I, I would do it in the form of a story and I would I'd, I've always wanted to entertain in that way and be a storyteller that's how it all started for me how, how everything started so this now is you know I, I did it with the music I found myself to blessed to go back to drama school and and, and study acting and have a beautiful career um late in life and and so what better way to tell my story than in the medium that I'm using now it just felt it felt right yeah mm. yeah and, and of course as your great song says gotta find a way indeed indeed so what have been the most challenging and exciting parts of, of writing this show into the elements that you've really found a challenge, but yet yeah, the excitement of achieving and getting you know, the story it's, out. It's, it's a challenge bearing your soul. Mm, right. You know, it is, it, is, it is a challenge because so many things come to you, so many voices. Oh my God. You open yourself to judge for judgment, you open yourself to. <laughs> To, for all the criticism and for whatever. Do you understand? Once you get past that. Reveal all. Huh? <laughs> Revealing all. Revealing <laughs> all. Uh, my mum always used to say to me, you know, from a, from a young age, you love talk your business too much. <laughs> <laughs> I always felt, why not? Why are we holding, I, I don't know why, you know, from a, from a very, very tender age, I've always thought to myself, why are we holding it? If you hold it in, What's the point? Because we live to experience and no matter what it is, we, we if we're experiencing, why not share it? <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Um, and also it releases you. You don't have to hold everything. You know what I mean? Um, it's something that I knew before I knew, if you know what I mean. Um, so yeah, so that, that part has been challenging. Um, and also, uh, to 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 write something that you feel you know does people want to hear this 
Mm. People want to know about your story. Does people want to hear your story? Like, who are you? Do you know what I'm saying? Is that like, you, you get through? You get through all of those things. You know, you get the little wise them to our kind of things to you know. But then once you once you learn to just okay, let let them voice say what they want to say, but detach yourself from them voices and just say, listen, this is my story. Whether it's embraced or not but it's my story and uh, I'm sharing it and whoever wants to hear it will come and hear it absolutely and you stay and you stayed focused stayed focused I stayed focused and you know one of the one of the joys I love theater I love theater I love acting I go and see a lot of shows because I love stories being told to me in a way where it's played out it's acted out and I'm experiencing it at the same time so whilst I'm experiencing and the thing with this show whilst things are unfolding it's based on a lot of memory this show it's a lot of memories are coming up and and the memories are playing out and as the memories are playing out things are unfolding for me as well as the audience yeah, in 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 rehearsal since we started rehearsal the amount of things that we've discovered uh, even today th- th- we're just discovering things every single day and actually that's life this that's what life is we're discovering every day you know what I mean and yeah. things are always changing those as we um, say those great spiritual moments they just come from nowhere yeah great so Hackney showrooms are well known for telling stories in an unusual way, in, un, in unusual ways. So how has it been to work with them on, on your story? It's been incredible working with Hackney showrooms, you know, because they've um, taken this story. We've been working on it for about five, six years together. Oh. When um, Nina, who is who, 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 one of the... Um, that um, artistic directors of Hackney Showroom, when she first got my words, it wasn't nothing like it is now, but it had these stories and it was just about shaping the stories. And so she's acted as a, an, an amazing dramaturg. Also the, my director, Joe, an amazing dramaturg and theater maker and actress. So, um, so we've been kind of working as a team for the last five six years solid on this piece and allowing it to tell us and inform us what kind of story this was and um what structure and what story what kind of story we were telling and we just we trusted that you know these experiences were strong enough to be uh, a piece of work so it was just about how how are we going to show this dramatically and yeah. theatrically? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So finally, what can audiences expect when they come to the show? You know, you can expect uh, a bit of a musical. Musical numbers. You can expect a, a spiritual journey. You can expect a few laughs, a few times of, well, real contemplation, you know? But just come to the theatre expecting to be entertained. That's the most important thing. So in terms of when does it start, how do people get in touch, how long does it run for? The The Legends of Them is going to be playing at the Brixton House Theatre and it starts on the 14th of September. We have the previews from the 14th of September until the 19th. 19th is the opening night and then it runs until the 30th. So from the 14th for the, to the 30th of September, you can book your tickets on Brixton House Theatre, Brixton House theatre.co.uk but if you just look up Brixton House Theatre you'll be able to get tickets and it's called the legends of them um they, we've got a lot of different wraparound events you know different events that's uh happening post show so we have uh, a post gig on the 23rd with uh some female DJs roll call we have a female roll call Claire Angel Olive Brooklyn 
Lioness Falls got to shine Makeda. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna have a throwdown. That's gonna be after the show, yeah. after my play. Um, and then, you know, on the 21st, you have like a post talk. So after the play, we're going to have a, a post talk um, hosted by Martina Leard. And on the 25th, we have a women's night, women of color night where, yeah, in the, the whole theater is just uh, pure woman. And then after that, we're going to have a sister circle uh, where, we, where we can just discuss any themes of the play. Um, you know, anyone's open to share and yeah discuss that and that's going to be hosted by lady phil so we've got a few wraparound events you know what i mean and obviously this is um based around um I, i'm a female in it so obviously it's my story so obviously you know it's it's female themed but it's for everybody it's for everyone sounds great so if people want to follow you get in touch with you have where do they find you you can find me on Facebook. Um, who, who, who am I? I think I'm Sotara Ma, okay. S U T A R A Ma, because that's my other name. I'm a I'm an AKA now. You understand? Oh. Sotara, AKA Lorna G, or Lorna G, AKA Sotara Ma. However you want to say it. Um, and I'm I'm on um, Instagram, Sotara Gale, on Instagram. No, I think I'm on Twitter, but I I have got no idea. I haven't used that for over a year or so. But yeah, you can find me, man. Just look out for Sotara, and 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 also I've got my website, sotara.org.uk. Right. S u t a r a. dot org. dot uk, and all my information, everything is there. Great. So thank you very much, and best wishes. And thank you. All the best, and see you again soon. See you again soon. Don't forget to book your tickets, guys. Don't be late on this one. You know, we, we're always talking about, you know, getting tickets in advance. And this with, with, when it comes to theatre, people book a lot ahead in advance. So I don't want no one to miss out. So come and see your show, come and support and um, blessings to everybody. Blessings. Thank you, Thank you very much. And good night. And good Take night. care. Thank you.